uh, my name's Evelyn and I play Ethel Drader of the Winter's Levy in Wintermark at Empire Lark. Um, my beautiful mother is filming this video for me, thanks very much mum. And I just wanted to show you guys a breakdown of my kit. My kit is still a work in progress. It didn't look like this when I first started and hopefully it won't look like this forever because I have a few things that I'm going to add to it. But yeah, so uh, it's a very hot sunny day today amazingly so I thought I'd show you sort of like a summer kit first so I'm gonna shed this fur and I've got um, here obviously I've done my hair um, I've, I'm a naga as you can see so I have like colorful feathers glued to hair grips and clips in my hair and I usually uh, for my hair I usually do um, a combination of braids and or loose hair um so just take this headband off for a sec and you can get a good look um i'd like if you've got long hair like i have uh, a really easy way of having your hair down but still off your face is to take two braids and uh pin them together at the back and it kind of keeps it off your face then so I've got that and I've got these loose just with some colourful wool braided into them because I think it looks nice underneath this jewellery uh, which I'll talk about in a second I've got a crop tunic so you have a standard tunic which is a, a tea tunic they're really really easy to make um, and you can also buy them they're very accessible pieces of basic kit um, so I made this myself and it's very simple but it's it's cropped here um, for the hot weather um, yeah normally a full-length tunic would be more like a t-shirt or a short dress um, but yeah I'm wearing a skirt I'll give you a little twirl from afar um, it's got really pretty fringe and embroidery on it and it's a sort of deep mossy green kind of i don't know what color what color would you call this one uh yeah deep moss green yeah it's a very it's a very deep green um and underneath it i'm wearing like sort of gray very thin gray jogging bottom horror pant type things um they'd be better if i had leg wraps um i did make some which i don't have they weren't very good to be honest um but you can't really tell because of my skirt um but it would be better if i had some leg wraps around the bottom um or i could go without these completely because i'm wearing the skirt i usually double up uh unless it's very hot and and i've got some nice boots on that um were a gift from my mom Actually, my mum's helped with this kit quite a bit, if you think about it, because the skirt was hers before as well. It's like a vintage skirt that my mum used to have. Um, this is like a Bertram boot, and they're waterproof. Um, nothing too fancy. I do have some fancier ones that are suede, but they're for indoors. I don't have them with me, I'm afraid. Um, but for the field, you don't need to have fancy in-character boots. It's nice if you do have them, but the main thing is keeping your feet dry throughout the event. Um, I might as well show you my jewellery now as well, so I'll come a bit closer. So I've got this um, macrame, it's macrame with uh, like cotton and this is a Phantom Quartz teardrop gem that I got ages ago and it used to be on a different string and I recently made this sort of choker for it. Um, I've got this. Uh, I don't really know what you'd call this uh, type of necklace, but it's got wooden beads that I got from a charity shop and bone, imitation bone, uh, fang things, I guess, um, that I made out of polymer clay. Um, they're not amazing, but I think they look pretty effective. And they're on a wire to keep the shape, and then the wire is on some string. This necklace is ammonite. And I got it from my friend Kelly's shop, um, Handmade Kelly. And she's also in my hall at Empire uh, in Wintermark. Um, and we sometimes run a shop at events as well. So this is the first bit of headdress that I wear. 
it is, can be a bit annoying to put over my feathers. Usually I put the feathers in after my head bands. Um, so I actually got this off Wish. Wish is evil and we shouldn't buy off Wish, but I did. It was a few years ago, I don't plan on getting anything else from there. <laughs> my mum's just done a thumbs down off camera. <laughs> but um, I don't plan on getting anything else from there, but I did get this off Wish. Um, and you can probably get it from this sort of thing from other places as well. Simple feather headband was cheap. Um, yeah, if you're crafty, you could very easily make one as well and just tie some feathers onto some kind of cord and tie it around a headband. Um, I have a... I have another headband which I made. Um, I bought this resin skull. I think it was eBay actually. I can't remember who made it, I'm very sorry. Actually, I think it says on it Alchemy Vault, something like that. It's a bit difficult to read. And I threaded it onto a belt that I made out of scrap leather. I don't buy new leather if I can help it because I don't. I try and avoid consuming animal products unless they're second hand so this is scrap leather that was waste from the upholstery industry and I made the belt out of it well it's a headband but it's in I used like a, a tutorial for a belt and it's got a couple of different holes so I can either fit it over my hair depending on what hairstyle I've got and this is how I normally wear it uh, a little bit more pulled down than that but just quickly that I usually wear it on my noggin but um, I wanted to show you, it gets very sunny like this and sometimes Wintermark people are like, how can we keep the sun off our faces in Wintermark? You could have like a thin shawl or something and put it over your head. Um, I like to wear this brown straw hat. Um, there, it doesn't say anything in the wiki about wearing a straw hat, but we know basically every civilization ever that's had hot weather has worn straw hats to keep the sun off them. And at the end of the day, safety is more important than being 100% on brief. And I, I usually add feathers to this hat as well, feather hair clip, uh, feather brooches, sorry. Um, they're currently pinned to a dress that I'll be showing you. Um, so I guess I need to make some more specifically for the for the hat but what I'll do if I'm wearing the hat is I'll I'll put the headband underneath the hat so that it's got a little bit more of a wintermark flavor and then with everything else with all my layers and all my kit it will be very obvious hopefully where I'm from yeah I made this headdress out of paper mache uh, I need to add a lining on the inside but it's pretty solid I'm quite pleased with it and I added some rags to the back. Black ones donated by my friend Tom. Purple and green ones that I got this fabric from Birmingham Rag Market, I think. And I just cut it into rabs and hot glue, rabs? Rags and hot glued it on. And I've got a stack with some of these rags uh, also tied onto it. This isn't my usual stab. I have a much fancier one that I worked very hard on, but it is for reasons currently under the guardianship of a friend. So for now, this is what I've got, and I think it does the trick, and it kind of matches. You'll notice if you read the wiki page for uh, Calavesi, it does mention bright flashes of colour, which is why I've opted for these bright coloured rags. Um, and they're purple and green, and I've got some blue paint on this. So I'm going to show you some of my other layers. So I'm going to put on a different under tunic. I'm walking the dog. <laughs> so... Yes, this is fabric from the first tunic I ever had. Originally, it was just a piece of fabric with a hole in it that I put over my head and belted round. That is a very effective way of doing things. However, I did decide that I wanted it as a long sleeve under tunic, so I took it back and I actually sewed it together. The sewing in it is frankly pretty shocking. Um, the stitches are all falling apart. The collar, I didn't, I didn't even think, oh, why don't I look up how to make a facing. I didn't even look it up. I just guessed and I did something and it, um, it's passable. The sleeves here are, uh, I've left them to fray. I think it looks quite nice to be honest. Some people might say you shouldn't do that. I only wear the outfit a few times a year so I think it's fine. Um, it, I'm not worried about it falling apart. It's already falling apart a little bit anyway but I have had it for a few years now and it's still, it's still serving me. 
think we're okay. Um, it's not the most amazing use of anything ever, it doesn't have to be. I'm currently wearing it over the top of my crop tunic um, because I don't have anywhere to privately get changed here in the park. That's going to make me very hot, but, but it'll be fine. Oh, by the way, the crop tunic is made of linen and this is made of cotton, which I dyed myself. And if I go back further, you can see, you can start to see this layering pattern. Okay, so I've now added another layer on top. It's a brown tunic that I made again. No amazing sewing going on here. I made this in about 10 minutes. Um, and I've knotted up the sides here. So it's kind of like a sort of fringy effect. This is linen. I do actually quite like to wear this when it's warm just by itself without any underlayers underneath. I think it's quite nice over the top as well. But because of the way I've done this, if I put my belt on and things, it then does kind of hide this cool wing effect. Um, so I really like to wear this when I'm running um, Calabasi dancing sessions because we've just got a lot of arms going up and things and I think it looks cool. I'm going to swap it for a simpler one now. So this is a simpler one. This construction of this is even worse than the construction of the other one, frankly. But to be honest with you, as Calavesi, our brief is very forgiving. You can get away with this. So if I come a bit closer, you'll see. Not hemmed, not hemmed, not hemmed. The cut is very questionable. Um, but layered over everything, it looks pretty good. Um, I got a slit here so again you can really see all the layers and um, when I've got a belt on it looks really cool I do have an under tunic in a different shade of green as well this is I don't really know what color you'd call this it's on that verge where green meets blue this is very much green um, and this is another under tunic that I have I'm quite happy keeping this one on so I'm not going to show you this uh, but I will insert a photo here. That's what it looks like on. And then over the top of this I can add belts and my little fur waistcoat thing that I got from a charity shop. I could, if I wanted, swap out this green skirt from underneath for this brown skirt. I could, if I wanted to, swap out all of this for this linen dress that I made. I made this for indoor events, it's very long. I'm only four foot 11. Um, so this might not be long on you, but it's very long on me. I made it for going to park balls and indoor events. I definitely don't wear this to Anvil because of the mud. This is very long. Um, this is an indoor, like Calavese version of Posh. I made this originally to go over the top of the linen dress but I went to a player event recently and it was very cold so I put this on over the top even though it's supposed to be for my fancy indoor outfit and I found it very helpful so this is now field kit as well I haven't got belt on yet I'll put belt on in a moment and you'll see how all the silhouette comes together but under layer next layer top layer um, under layer next layer an additional layer top layer I'm gonna get a bit closer to show you some of these details so I've made a bunch of brooches I've got here three teardrops if you know anything about Wintermark history you'll understand why this is important uh, sim symbolism three teardrops and some feathers these are real crow feathers this side I made this uh, leather feather it's supposed to look like a falcon feather uh, I made this out of scrap leather same as I did with my other thing my headband and again beads feathers this brooch I made out of polymer clay I couldn't find something that I needed to help make it look more like bone when I made it and I was in a hurry so I do need to touch it up to make it look a bit more bone but it's supposed to look like bone and this is a magpie which is the symbol of both my hall and my coven is we have magpie symbology I've got loads of feathers and beads hanging off it 
and then I've got this brooch which again is a feather, goose, swan, what as you like it, it's a white feather with beads hanging off and I've made several strings of beads to connect the two. This is inspired by like Viking and Anglo-Saxon fashion where they'd have brooches here and like beads come off but instead of glass beads I've gone for wood to be more calavasi and I've got on the bottom of the dress some more brooches with feathers and beads pinned on this one's the eagle feather yeah I'm planning to make even more of those and just sort of litter my kit with it um, I'm gonna put a belt on now As you can see this already brings the silhouette in more it pulls everything in I no longer look as baggy and now that looks like there's some logic behind it um, it's also functional because you can hang stuff from your belt your tankard your purse whatever pouches or bags or things that you need to hang from you can hang from I just got this from a charity shop it's nice and thick so it's sturdy and good I've got at the moment hanging from it this is actually moisturizer in here um, because I have very dry hands and especially when you're at LARP um, sometimes you're unable to wash your hands so you're using hand sanitizer which dries out your skin or when you wash your hands you have no way of drying them and especially when it's cold this is really bad for your skin uh, my skin suffers a lot so this is actually moisturizer and I made the cover for it out of scrap leather and this is hand sanitizer and I made the cover for it out of scrap leather and there's a hole in the top where that it's strung onto and it just slides in through the gap it hangs off my belt and I have really quick access to hygiene and skincare <laughs> in character. Now over the top of this functional belt I have a decorative belt which is made out of scrap leather. Originally this belt was intended to be part of mage armour. Now you may or may not know that if you're a battle mage and you have the battle mage skill you can wear something called mage armour which allows you to take a couple extra hits and still cast magic. If you wear mundane armour you can't cast magic. Originally this was meant to be battle mage armour but I decided to drop the battle mage skill because I never ever used it and I don't go into combat so it was kind of pointless me having it. For mage armour to be functional you need three pieces of mage armour. So this and my headband with the skull on it which is now in an unknown location. These match, they both have the runes of night on them. This has a bird skull. This has um, something dreamcatcher-esque on it um, with a gemstone in and some feathers hanging off. I need to replace the feathers because they've, they've been, <laughs> despite the fact I don't go to battle, this looks like it's seen battle. <laughs> to be functional mage armor, there'd need to be a third piece. I did make pauldrons, but I don't wear them. As there's only the two of them, they are functionally accessories and I'm not accidentally breaking the rules because I'm only wearing two. I haven't got braces or anything else, so that's fine. Not that I think anyone's going to hit me anyway because uh, I don't fight, but you never know. I might annoy the right person. Now with a headdress, I really should take this headband off. This is already looking pretty good, I think. I could put this on. And I think that really adds to the silhouette and with the staff I look very, very mystical. I think so. Because this decorative belt is only made out of scrap leather and it's got no strength of its own, I, I need to wear it over the top of the other one. And what I tend to do is wear another belt that I can hang other stuff from and easily get to because this belt, the one that's got like good structure, is hidden by the decorative one so I can't easily get to it. So on this belt I might have, for example, my little pouch that I keep my book in 
and my coin purse. I also made this from scrap leather and painted it. And I can remove and add things to this belt much more easily. Maybe do it a bit looser so it's more like round, round my hip like that. And usually I'd wear this underneath and I'd put this one on last, but I screwed that up this time, so that's why. <laughs> but it's still, it looks fine. So inside this pouch, I keep money. Inside this pouch, I keep a book and a pencil. But the pencil I seem to have thrown somewhere uh, by accident while we've been doing all of this. I made the book as well, actually our scrap leather again and a toggle and it's like a it's a journal it's got a ribbon as a bookmark and tea stained pages inside now let's talk about keeping warm the obvious thing everyone's going to tell you is a billion pairs of socks tights under your trousers trousers under a skirt skirts are for any gender trousers under a skirt you'll be very warm and tasty I have two pairs of these gloves with fur trim, uh, fingerless gloves. I tend to prefer the brown ones as they go with my colour scheme much better than the black ones do, but I also have a pair of black ones. It's good in general, if, if, if it's possible for you to do so, to have more than one of your like underlayers especially and things, because if you get wet you slip into some mud and get covered in mud or you slip in a puddle or it pisses it down raining um, and you get all wet and it's your only kit for, and it, maybe this happens and it's only Friday now you have Saturday and Sunday in, for, in wet kit you might get ill and you're definitely going to be uncomfortable so if you can bring more than one of things which is why I have so many different under tunics that I can layer up and mix and match in different ways that will benefit you greatly keep warm and just for a bit of wintermark um, style I've got this um, faux fur little jacket that I got from a charity shop you can find these in lots of charity shops at least you could when I was going around them uh, they seem to be everywhere last time last time I was looking for them uh, or like on eBay secondhand because they're not really in fashion at the moment so you can get them quite cheap secondhand and in charity shops so adds a bit of wintermark flair to the kit I'm just going to take it off though because it is very very warm I also have this knitted cardigan which is a mossy green colour that I got from secondhand shop I don't usually wear it but if it was very cold I could and of course wearing thermals underneath as well now I want to show you my cloak so I have two cloaks this is my old cloak. My old cloak that I used to wear has lots of feathers sewn onto it. I've spent hours sewing feathers onto this. Someone did make a comment to me when I was a new player about how I should have black in my kit because I'm Calavasi. That is incorrect. Storm crows should have black. General Calavasi population doesn't need to wear any black at all other than feathers. Um, but I listened to the people making comments like that and felt quite self-conscious so I added black onto this cloak which might get me mistaken for a storm crow now it's one of the reasons I don't wear this anymore the other reason is because I didn't really like the way I'd constructed it I didn't look up anything on YouTube or anywhere how to make a cloak, how to wear a cloak I just made it up as I went along <laughs> this is a recurring theme I don't know, it is kind of cool because I, I basically made these long things so I could tie it in the front or I could tie it round behind me, round un behind, un the strap goes under your arm and then you tie them round the back and it kind of looks almost like the cloak is floating off my shoulders but actually it's like on the strap. I don't know, I guess, I guess this is still kind of a cool cloak. But I haven't worn it in a very long time. Maybe I should start wearing it again or I don't know. What I've been doing instead is, and I've had second thoughts about this one as well because it makes me very, very green and it hides all of my beads and my feathers and I get mistaken for a Navari. <laughs> but I've got a pinanula brooch already pinned in from last time that I wore it. That was a bit lazy of me. 
So this is just a sheet of real wool that I got off eBay. Like, and I wear it in the sort of like Iron Age way. So I can't remember because I haven't done this in ages, but basically you have one bit over your shoulder and another bit up. You put your brooch through. Maybe I should come closer. You put the brooch through and you put it on and you twist that. I've actually done this in a very dangerous way. I've got it pointing up at me. For the sake of time, I'm not going to fix that, but you should have it pointing downwards because you don't want to accidentally stab yourself. It's not safe. Um, though actually, now that I've rotated it around, if I rotate it around, it's still not ideal. So you want to be careful of that. And then you just gather this bit up here over your shoulder like this. Hope I'm doing Iron Osric proud. Um, it's been a while since I've done this because I'm usually lazy and I just leave it on and then pull it over my head and then if it rains you can put it over your head like this you look a bit like some kind of bog witch but that's okay because we're kind of basic so we kind of are I don't know if I'm going to add some decorations to this to make it look more feathery and stuff uh, or if I'm going to get a whole new cloak altogether I'm not sure yet um, but yeah, so that's uh, another way of keeping warm and dry. When it's very, very cold, sometimes events are very, very cold. Unlike today, I might put on a simple knitted beanie. Obviously, hats are a bit of a controversial topic for winter, Mark, and we can have that debate another day. But just to keep warm, if it's very, very cold, sometimes I do put a beanie hat on. Just to show you quickly, I've got a skirt hike. I did make a couple of these. I just sort of macrame braided some yarn uh it's honestly it doesn't look fantastic but it does the job i might have been better off doing other colors but that's just what i had at my disposal you have two hoops and you pull through try not to get the brooch in pull through your fabric and then you pull it over through the second one. That's just to show you how that works. So as you can see, it's removed a lot of the length. I wouldn't normally do it on my wool overdress. I normally use this for my skirt when it's hot so that my skirt's a bit shorter and it works really well on the thin fabric um, and lifts that up. It doesn't work so well on thick wool and it looked a little bit weird just now when I tried because I had the brooch there so I couldn't do it at the edge and because this fabric is only it's essentially a length of fabric with a hole in the top um, I was gonna add sleeves uh, and make it a full dress and then I decided hey actually I quite like it like this um, so it doesn't really work that well with a skirt hike I also have this bag I actually made this bag too. The, the strap is a belt from a charity shop, which I was using as a belt and then used as a strap for this bag. This is vinyl that I got off Birmingham Rag Market and painted with brown with acrylics because it was bright red before. The fastening is just some beads and string that go, th go through each other. It's not the most amazingly made thing, but it does the job. It's still held up. I made it in 2019, so four years ago and it's still still serving me well. I also wear glasses. I keep them in this little burlap pouch and I've got some regular ones here and they go on. I've got some hemp string on them over my ear. Over my ears with the string and then you pinch them closed over the nose. And um, these are, I believe, 14th century reproductions from Zenosa Workshop on Etsy. And I also have them in this amber tint for sunglasses. And it's a different design. It's got these cute little faces on that I really like. Um, and this one's just a simple design. And I keep these 
in a pouch this little burlap sack with also this little case that my fangs live in my fangs are from scarecrow fangs and they're the ones that just click in and out that you mold to your teeth it took me several attempts to finally get it to work because I found it very difficult but they they work now I'm no longer sticking them on with dental denture glue and when you eat you really really have to take them out because it's not safe to eat with them on in case they come out and you choke on them or swallow them so when I eat I take them out I put them in this little case they're nice and safe and then when I'm finished I can put them back in everything's golden and at the moment this lives in here now really out of character and in character things should be stored separately I did have a couple other bags um, that I got from charity shops but they've broken and need repairing so at the moment that lives in here one of the bags that's broken uh, is this one I thought I'd hit a gold mine when I found this because it looked like it had never been used and it's such a cool shape but one of the straps is broken this is just a random piece of fabric that I have that if I if it was a little bit windy but not cold and I just wanted to quickly throw something over myself that wasn't going to make me overheat I could use this I could use my penannula badge penannula brooch from my cloak to pin it up um, and it's just a bit something small or you know if it was raining I could put it over my head or alternatively I can put it over a chair to make the chair look nice and use it as dress setting dress, yeah dress, dress. set dressing <laughs> last but by no means least I have a light source now you can't see that it's turned turned on because of how bright it is so I'm going to keep it turned off but this is some little sort of string lights in a bottle and um, my friend in my hall my Thane Aaron makes these Aaron is played by Indy and sells them in character and I bought one and it's been very very useful and I've used it at other laps I'm actually using it as a bedside lamp at the moment <laughs> and it's really cute and nice and I call it fireflies and I always like to make a joke about when I'm turning it on I'm going hey wake up and then they come on <laughs> and I have my tankard I actually have several tankards this one has my name on it on a little paper tag Ethel Drader of the Winter's Levy so if I put it down people will know it's mine I will know it's mine because it is germy to share tankards we do not like germs. I definitely don't like germs. I see a lot of people sharing drinks at Empire. And even now after COVID, people are still doing it. Um, and I'm incredibly germophobic and I don't like that. So my name's on my tankard and you're not drinking out of my tankard. <laughs> and I'm not drinking out of someone else's tankard. Um, yes, this is pewter. No, it's not. It's silver plated. My bad. This is silver plated. Got it from a charity shop. I've got a bunch of them. Yeah. You can also tie a string around your tankard and have it around your belt so that you've got uh, easy access to it. Um, I used to do that, it's not currently on a string. But yeah, I think at the moment this is all the kit I've got to show you. Obviously I have some knickknacks and doohickeys and what sits like musical instruments and set dressing and stuff. But this video is just about my costume and I threw in a few other bits just because so yeah I hope that was helpful or inspiring or interesting if if you didn't need any help or inspiration then I hope it still interested you uh, otherwise I don't know why you've been sat here watching this very long video if you're a new player I just want to stress that you absolutely don't have to have the most amazing kit in the world ever but especially when you just are starting read the wiki talk to other players See what people can help you with and what advice you can get um i i don't wear black i know the pictures on the wiki are all black there's nothing wrong with wearing black as a calavesi especially as a storm crow but there are other things in the palette um moss which is greens dun which is browns smoke which is greys um you want to look like you're blending in with with the bog um and i think I think I'm doing a decent job with some flashes of colour and obviously ode to birds, <laughs> a tribute to the birds. <laughs>
yeah thanks very much for watching hopefully i'll see you at an event happy laughing lots of love and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or like me to talk about or show you um yeah bye Now I've lost the belt. Am I wearing it? Oh. <laughs>